Next speaker is uh, Ron van den Acker, who's Vice President Indirect Procurement at DSM. Uh, so Ron's part of the leader, procurement leadership team at DSM, has got a long and varied career, which I'm sure he'll, he'll touch upon. So please welcome Ron to the stage. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, and indeed, Ron van der Acker. Working for DSM, I will explain later a little bit about the company DSM. Uh, worked there for 25 years, and as I'm a chemical engineer. Spent most of my time in uh, manufacturing uh, technology, uh, running plants, site director, manufacturing director, supply chain director. And only the recent three years, I moved over to uh, purchasing and leading the indirect field in DSM. I think the big advantage in that is that I do understand what the business needs, because I was there for almost 25 years in that business, in supply chain and in manufacturing. And I think in the next era of doing purchasing and indirect purchasing, that's instrumental. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that we need to move into, and that's why our strategy is called Beyond Saving. It's not just getting a better price, it's what is beyond the savings that we generate. And I'd like to uh, share a little bit about the journey we went so far. I see some similarities in the other presentations. Maybe I'll give a slightly different angle to things and also take you uh, with me on what are we gonna do in the next couple of years. Basically, that is uh, what I'd like to tell you a little bit about it, the journey, something about DSM and, uh, and the journey ahead of us. The DSM mission, so DSM uh, stands in the past, it's a, a hundred years old company, it stands for the Dutch state mines in the past. Now we're not Dutch anymore, 95% of our sales and our factories are outside the country. We're not state owned anymore and we definitely don't have mines anymore. So we transformed the company into a totally different company than where we originated from. We're a life science and material science company Maybe not so uh, familiar, but you use it every day. We're the leading producer of vitamins, omega-3 and 6, if you may uh, be aware. And in the performance materials, uh, we, we produce resins and engineering plastic for automotive industry, etc. Uh, and we make the strongest fiber in the world. Uh, I can tell you there are a lot of soldiers in Afghanistan who saved and, and uh, got their lives because of our uh, strong fibers in their armor protection. So where are we located? Again, we started in the Netherlands, we're headquartered in the Netherlands, uh, but we spread all around the globe. We have more than 200 locations uh, over all continents, and we're built up of a lot of acquisitions we did in the recent uh, years. So we also we have a completely blend of asset base of uh, businesses and factories all over the globe. Just show you that because this is also creating some complexity in the indirect space, because we need to serve them all. Around nine billions of sales, we're profitable. We're making 1.3 billion of EBITDA last year. And uh, a huge portion of it is, uh, is also uh, procurement direct and indirect materials. The purchasing mission, I uh, don't want to go in all the what and how exactly, because we translate it in the end mission, although it's important for the organization, also for your position in the company, uh, but for me, the value pr proposition that we bring to the company is much more important. And for me, it starts with the bottom part, our people and our capabilities. Uh, when I was in manufacturing, I could say, this is what I produce. But what do we produce as, manufacturing, of, as uh, purchasing? The thing that we do is we connect the outside world to the inside world. So we need to have people, that's our foundation. People who can collaborate and who can create and get to beyond savings. There are different people, by the way, than the buyers that we had in the past, or who could knock the last cent out of the, uh, out of the purchasing game. That's not the same people that we need in the future or that we currently have. So collaboration is key in how we uh, uh, attract and develop our, our people. Then the basics, total cost of ownership, already clearly beyond price, nothing new there. But what is important also, we need to do it in an efficient and transparent way. I think it will resonate that the cost of uh, procurement is always under pressure, same with us, so we need to do it very efficient. And transparency becomes more and more important because we will touch upon the mandate given to us in a, in a moment, that famous word mandate that always comes back. But if we are stuck in funny money discussions, uh, then our credibility is quickly out of the door. Yeah? So transparency 
And what we deliver is very important in that respect. When you have that in place, and I repeat, only when you have that in place, you have your place achieved in the company, then you're ready for the next level. And that is what we call the differentiators, where Beyond Savings for Us starts. Asset light, innovation and sustainability. Sustainability, not just as a compliance topic, but really as a business driver, which is in the heart of the strategy of DSM. Just a snapshot uh, where we are uh, currently uh, of indirect and uh, just giving some reflection on the animal that I try to tame every day with my organization. Uh, I have around 190 FTEs in the organization. We have more than 90% spend transparency, PO compliance pretty high, over 90%. We integrated the whole indirect spend in one SAP backbone system, the SRM system, because our legacy system in the company consists of more than 60 ERP systems, so we have built that single platform around that. Two billion of spent is, uh, is managed by me, on my organization. Uh, we're now at above 7% annual savings. Talking about suppliers, I learned about the number of suppliers, try to manage that. Actually, last year we used 45,000 suppliers, but if you look in the systems, we cover over more than 125,000 suppliers plus, and we're adding every week, I don't know, a couple of hundred. So that's a, a difficult animal to tame as well. We're moving forward in the strategies, four clusters uh, uh, in the strategies, 500,000 PDP transactions, and supplier development plans, key supplier management programs, around 20 at the moment. So just to give you a snapshot of, uh, of where we are. Yeah, this is one of the corner slides I always use in the company about the last journey, the journey so far that we made. And it started a little bit with the differentiated value proposition and the scope, uh, because uh, we tried in the beginning to manage every indirect spend around the globe, the 1.9 to 2 billion that we have. But can you imagine? We have a site in Australia called Wagga Wagga, where there are 10 people working there, and I don't feel that I can add much value over there in managing the indirect spend, and there is not much of leverage to do. So we need to select there, and we decided to focus ourselves at the 70 major sites of DSM, and then we cover more than 95% of the, of the spend. So that scope is also in effectiveness and efficiency a very important uh, topic. Organizational model. Uh, yes, we have been given the mandate by the managing board of DSM that every spend in indirect is managed by my organization. However, in a company as DSM, I don't know how it works with your companies, but that usually is not the end of a debate, but the beginning of a discussion what that, that mandate exactly means. And you can spend a lot of time in that. I felt that is really useless to do so. I think it's more important to create the right pool in the organization, the right capability that you're respected and that your position is recognized and used to the, to the full extent. And yes, every now and then you can use your mandate as well. What for me is extremely important is that we split the transactional part from the sourcing part because the urgent day-to-day -day operation things will always get the most attention and the more important stuff will not get that attention. So we split the organization in two pieces. One is what we call the daily cycle, the PDP cycle that needs to run uh, every day, and the sourcing part which really have a strategic impact and a buying impact on the businesses. Another very important part, regionalization. In the past, we had a small group of category managers sitting in the Netherlands and trying to rule the world and say something about how it works in the US, etc. Now, that doesn't work completely in the indirect space. For direct, maybe it's a little bit different story in the chemical field, but in indirect, I'm absolutely convinced it doesn't work. So we made an analysis of all our categories, and we came to the conclusion that more than 80% of our categories are leverageable on a regional basis. So therefore, we regionalized all the category managers. Set up four regions, APAC, two in Europe, because there's a big asset base, and one in the Americas, and put all the category managers into the regions, but made sure that we connect them via cluster directors so that the functional excellence in the different clusters are well maintained and covered. But the expertise are there where the business is in the regions. Yeah? Line of sight relationship, extremely important also when you go to 
beyond savings and make value chain contributions to the procurement uh, function. And as mentioned before, performance management, very important. There's a cost associated with it. You also need to deliver and you need to report out on that. Account management meeting with the businesses, transparency on the numbers, that's, uh, that's a key uh, cornerstone of uh, how we move forward. Yeah, just some numbers. Um, I don't want to go into details uh, of them, but they're similar also to what was presented before, over 60% uh, contract compliance, uh, over 7% uh, performances, etc. So we've done all of that, we made through that journey, and I think we created uh, a lot of additional uh, performance by setting up this organization and running it as it, uh, as it is running. This is an important one, because in the last couple of years, we got recognized for the purchasing game. There was not so much debate anymore about what is your added value, uh, do you select the supplier base, what is your performance, etc. It's there. So what is then the next level? One of the things that was really important last year that we managed to do was to start influencing the demand. And we did it in different ways. In the beginning, the managing board started to ask us because we have all the transparency on what people are spending. We have a very good uh, spend transparency and order transparency in the company. What we said in that moment is we're not going to police the spend. So if they're going to spend it, it's up to the business. It's their money. It's their decision to spend. However, we can monitor that. And by monitoring, reporting, sharing that data and information, you can influence a lot, I can tell you. So what we did is we first segmented more or less the spend in different categories. So not the standard category uh, selection, but more on an essential or non-essential basis. Not saying, uh, I don't know if this is important for you, because that's a different discussion, but whether it's essential on a period of 60 to 90 days for your business, yes or no. And if it's not essential, maybe you can postpone it, or maybe you stop using that. The other side is also looking at the complexity, how much integrated in the business is it, or how much commoditized is it in, in the way you use that. And we start managing via spent uh, teams in the businesses, so not led by us, but led by the businesses, and reviewed all the spent by the businesses themselves according to those axes, and reported out on a company basis what the results of that spent mitigation control lead to. Performance management, this is one of the oh, sorry, this is one of the performance reports. And also we made spend reports on the site level, on the business unit level, on the business group level, and on the DSM company level. Just by monitoring, just by reporting. This whole thing all together with some policies, mindset changes, behavior changes, support from the managing board, created a value of around 50 to 100 million euros last year. So we're not, you can't measure that completely. You don't know what have been spent otherwise, but if you compare spent 2012 compared to 2013 on a like-for-like -like basis, the overall spending went down by around 100 million. Yeah? Spent management, that has nothing to do with the savings and the purchasing game in itself is creating that transparency. And I think that's one of the roles we could play but we clearly decided not to go into a policing mode in terms of the spend. So what's next? So spend on the control, systems in place, contracts at a very high level. What's then the next level? How to move forward? So in a majority curve, we went up the curve pretty much and we said, what should we do now to become functionally excellent? What are the next steps to take? Um, don't want to go in a long debate about the uh, macroeconomic developments, but there is a change coming up. It's a question when it hits us, uh, not if it hits us. Uh, we went through the whole economic crisis. We put a lot of pressure on our supply base. I think we created a lot of value getting that money out of the supply base. They shrink the supply base also tremendously in certain areas, certainly in Europe. But there's a moment this is going to turn. And suddenly when the economics, uh, economy is picking up, we see that clearly now in the US, at least in my supply base in the US, that the power balance is changing. It's not one size fits all, but you see it in different areas, you see the power balance changing. And we're pretty convinced that somewhere in time, the scarcity, 
not only in raw materials uh, and, and, and things like that, but also in the indirect supply in certain areas will kick in. And at that moment in time, it's very important that you have built the right relationship with your supply base, because you could be on your own in that uh, moment or uh, uh, losing it in the power game there. So to prepare also for that time, we looked at different things there. A couple of angles, uh, yeah, DSM is growing, it's changing, so we need to adapt. I need to adapt my organization to that, leave that a little bit aside here. But two other things we need to do. We need to decomplex. I showed you a little bit the number of suppliers, uh, the number of contracts, et cetera, that we have. So if we keep on having this complexity, uh, yeah, I just need to add people and it's hard to, uh, to manage that uh, supply base. And the other side is the game-changing initiative. Asset light, innovation, sustainability, how do you really drive that? It's not, again, getting a new contract in place. It's not about the next 5% of the price of. It is how do you create value change solutions in the businesses? And that's what we call the game changing uh, initiatives. Couple of things on decomplexing. Uh, now the organization is set, we're now standardizing our processes. We do have those processes already in place, so that's not the point. But now we anchor it all in one procurement platform. So we selected Ariba as part of SAP because that connects over time the best with our uh, ERP landscape. And we will, are in the process now this year, it will be uh, fully implemented doing e-sourcing, supplier lifecycle management and contract lifecycle management all in that same tool. It's not the tool that is the goal. The goal in the end is to connect the virtual organization. Again, we have around 190 people all around the globe. You can only tap into the capabilities of those 190 people if you connect them in the right way and if you are able to multiply their capabilities in a smart way. And that's why we also will make it mandatory to use that as a platform of capturing all the information, capturing all the data, and working together with each other. The other part is uh, how to get to a lower number of suppliers. Well, we acquired a lot of companies. They all brought their own supply base uh, in there. I explained you more than 125,000 suppliers in the systems. So the next step is that we develop the preferred suppliers for every subcategory in every region. That's a huge effort, by the way. So we have the four regions. We're focusing on eight countries. We define the four clusters, which is physical distribution, technical goods and services, facility goods and services, and ICT. And we have 140 regional categories in there. So per regional subcategory, you need to define your preferred supplier in that region. Yeah? And then you can drive much more uh, your spend towards those preferred suppliers. What we call the blue book, we need to we're already on our way, but when that is finished, it's very clear this will drive uh, the, uh, the spend towards those uh, preferred suppliers. Yeah? And it's what we now call the blue book. If you then deviate from that, you will have an issue in the company. The other part is the relationship with the businesses. And it's not just about uh, segmenting your supply base. We all do that. Uh, but it's also driving it via different angles. What is the value to the DSM businesses? So it's not the spend, what is the value? It can be a small company, the value can be big for DSM. How critical is it for DSM businesses? Yeah? Looking at the power balance over time. How unique are you? It's just a single supply base, etc. How is IP organized in that uh, supply base uh, solution? And is there a willingness and is there the right power balance to form a potential strategic alliance. Do they also see us as a customer of choice? And do we see them as a supplier of choice? That's not always the case with our major suppliers. It's good to think about that. Those are other drivers for segmentation than just spend value, et cetera. So we are re-segmenting it and then selecting the 20, the top 20, where we are building now key supplier management programs in full with executive sponsorship up to the managing board on those uh, uh, relationship and the key supplier management programs. And with the other 400 mainly preferred suppliers, we build up what we call the light key supplier management program. That program is just not sitting around the table, shaking hands and saying, now we're a partner, now we're a, uh, having an alliance with each other. You go to the different steps. 
you need to be a supplier, the performance needs to be okay. Uh, the next level is improvement activities, developing new businesses, having joint innovation programs, and in the end, you migrate into an alliance with each other. So that's a different way than just uh, starting it uh, uh, from scratch. So the last slide. So where do we want to be in 2016? I told you a little bit about decomplexing, game changing is to really drive that beyond, let's say, the savings performance that we want to keep uh, in place. Having this Ariba as the virtual procurement platform in place, decreasing our supply base by 50%. The other point I didn't mention so far is that we are now also on an e-connectivity journey. More than 65% of the transactions, POs flowing out, invoices coming in via e-business connectivity. Developing further the organization, anchor sustainability and innovation. We do have full ownership of contracting at that moment in time. And we have business intelligence driven value chain solution, the real game changing initiatives. That was the journey so far. Thank you.